Welcome guys, in this video we are going to go over um, explaining the different design principles using an enterprise network. And to start, we are going to take a look at the um, hierarchical model, the tier 3 topology. So basically having um, three layers, we first have the access layer, and the access layer is where the end devices like computers, printers, um, cameras, um, and so on, you know, attach to the wire portion of the campus. So this is the first axis that they see. Is they're directly connected to, to the switches. And this are this is and this is the access layer. Then we have the distribution layer um, um, and the role is that it acts as a control boundary between the access layer and the core. And both the access layer and the core, which is going to be over here, the core are essentially dedicated um, special purpose layers. You know, the access layer is dedicated to meeting the functions of the end device connectivity. And the core layer is just dedicated to providing nonstop connectivity across the entire campus. But on uh, the distribution layer, on the other hand, it serves, it serves uh, multiple purposes. Um, one of those is that we are going to have here um, the first half redundancy protocol and those protocols is uh, HSRP is one of them. HSRP is a Cisco proprietary um, proprietary protocol and you know HSRP or hard and standby protocol um, is a Cisco proprietary so you cannot run it between a Cisco and an HP or a Ruba or Juniper it needs to be Cisco to Cisco so if we have different switches like Junipers and all that then you want to run the VRRP and VRRP um, is an open source protocol, and you can run that. Um, and you can run that first half redundancy protocol uh, of VRRP between Juniper, Aruba, Cisco, and, and any other switch that has it, right? And then we have GLBP, and GLBP is another Cisco proprietary protocol. But the difference between G GLBP, HSRP, and VRRP is that HSRP and VRRP uh, are only going to uh, allow you to have one active, basically, router, right, or switch. So w one active switch and, uh, and the other one is going to be on standby, not doing anything. But for GLBP, you can have one more than active switch or, you know, or router at a time, which is really nice. And also, at the distribution, we are going to have ether channels right now if you don't know ether channel is a port link aggregation technology in which multiple physical ports or port links are grouped into one logical link so right here we have two physical ports right and these two ports are basically grouped into one logical link so you're going to see that at the distribution and you're also going to see that at the uh, at the core as well and like I said, it aggregates access nodes and uplink right here with an ether channel. And those the, the two different ether channels that are there or protocols that are there is LACP. LACP is an open source. So you can run that between different flavors of switches and routers. Um, and then we have PAGP or PACP. And this one is a Cisco proprietary protocol. Therefore, you can only use it with Cisco switches. You cannot do it between, you know, Juniper and Aruba and Cisco. It has to be Cisco to Cisco because it, it is a Cisco proprietary um, protocol, Pack B. And also, uh, you're going to have some filtering, security, and also quality of servers that is going to be happening at the distribution layer. And then we have the core, guys, and the core is basically the backbone connectivity and is the aggregation point for the for other layers and modules in the Cisco Enterprise campus architecture. And the core must provide a high level of redundancy and adapt to changes very quickly. As you can see over here, we have Pack B. So at the core, you're going to have Pack B and LCP um, going from the distribution to the core over here. And you're also going to see um, uh, protocols like HSRP, VRRP, and GLBP, which are those are first half redundancy protocols. 
all right and and the the core basically you know it, 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 the core layer helps in its scalability during future growth. So you, if you're going to keep adding more, it is going to be scalable. So it's going to be really nice for you. It also is going to provide, you know, reliability through redundancy and fast convergence. So th that core, so if you have a, either a core, the core is either going to be a router, a high end router, or it's going to be a layer three switch. You can also put a layer three switch and you want to have you know, one on, on on active and one on standby. So if the if the active one goes down, then the one on standby can um, bring up the connectivity um, really fast. And then it has you know has high speed backbone and aggregation point, just like I said, aggregation point over here. So you know you need to have high end devices over there because it is going to basically take care of the entire network, right? So that's the three tier topology and then we have the collapse core or the tier two topology and in here what we have is we have the access layer right and the access layer just provides connectivity to those uh to computers router uh, not routers to computers it's to, to the end users right to computers cameras and printers basically just like we said before and then we have the distribution on the core and that's why it is called a collapse core meaning that we are collapsing the um, the core and the distribution and just making it just one layer over here and we call this the collapse core tier two because we have the distribution and the core in just one layer instead of three like we saw before right and then uh, we need to talk about the router versus um, switch and the first one that we want to take a look at is at the switch and for this one is basically you have um well the, the layer let me see how we're gonna so you know when you are designing the access layer you can have it as only layer two or introduce routing and each implementation has its benefits and drawbacks right so here, uh, you can see that for the switch one, you can see that layer two is going to expand all the way to the distribution. So between the axis and the distribution, we are going to be using spanning tree, which you don't want to do that. So that, that's a drawback. And you're going to be running, you know, just VLANs and all that uh, stuff over here. So we're going to need, um, over here, we are going to probably be running um, ether channel port aggregation and it's going to run in spanning tree which nobody wants to deal with spanning tree and all that and then from the distribution to the core we are going to probably just do like a static route and if we if, if it is a bigger if it is like a enterprise then what you want to do is you want to have a dynamic routing protocol like OSPF, EIGRP, ISIS whatever you want to run but you want to run a dynamic routing protocol hopefully OSPF because with OSPF, it is an open source protocol, and therefore you can have, um, you're not just attached to running Cisco only, because if you run the IGRP, that is a, I think still, I, I think they just made it an open source for EIGRP, but most routers um, from other, or like through switches from other vendors like HP do not um, have EIGRP yet. Um, and then for the router, um, this one is basically you are only going to be doing VLANs on the axis. And then from the axis to the distribution and to the core, right, layer three. So from here, we are going to be running a dynamic routing protocol, hopefully, or static routes. If it's only one site, you can just run static route um, easy enough. But if it is a bigger enterprise, then that's when you want to um, do a dynamic routing protocol like OSPF, EIGRP hopefully not rip uh, but you're going to be running a dynamic routing protocol over here and then um, when is the core or when the core layer is basically um, needed so when do you need to have the core right so without the core or without a core layer you know the distribution layer switches will need to be fully meshed basically all of them will need to be connected and this design is really hard to scale um, due to the increase in cabling requirements because each new building that you add um, 
you're going to need to have a full mesh connectivity to all the distribution switches. So if you add like building five over here, it is going to have to be connected to building one, two, three, and four. Um, and that's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of money that you're going to be spending on running wires and, and all that. Probably it's going to be fabric because they're not going to be that close and you want it to be also fast. But if we do a, you know, a tier three, right? Or if you add a cord to it, what happens is we are going to have a lot less cables because all you need to do is like from building one, all you need to do is connect to the core and that's it. You don't need to run a fully, uh, a fully match topology, right? Because you don't have to connect to building two, four and three. All you need to do is run into the core, right? You want to probably run like a dynamic routing protocol. That would be nice over here. And from that dynamic routing protocol, you know, you can get to, to building two, four and three and five and six and whatever because the core will have connectivity to the older buildings, right? You, you get, now you get it why you need the core layer. And this is it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Make this channel grow by donating. You can go to ccdt.com slash donate, and you can either do it through PayPal or Patreon. If you select the PayPal option, um, you can select any amount you want. On Patreon, we have three different membership, three, five, and nine dollars per month, and you can cancel whenever you want. Also, if you haven't done so, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel at CCNA Daily Tips. Go ahead and subscribe. Thank you guys. Bye bye.